As I mentioned in the last video, where I made the Asana Ha coaster, in this video I'll make the piece that I teach students in my intermediate workshops. This is a hexagonal jigumi with an Asana Ha background and a Kawari Asana Ha feature. I covered the hexagonal jigumi and the Asana Ha in the last video, but I'll go through that again here as well. The key aspect that you'll learn here is how to cut the jigumi to size and how to attach the skeko. This is a totally different process than that for the square jigumi, and once you know how to do this, the possible uses are endless. Not just art pieces, but anywhere you have a frame and panel, you can insert a kumiko panel that's as complex or as simple as you like. The new pattern, Kawari Asano Ha, is very straightforward but attractive and I use it fairly frequently in my work. It lends itself to great expression with the use of different coloured wood, as you can see in these photos. So without further ado, let's get stuck into it. As you can see by the dimensional diagram, the kumiko have a mitsuke of 4mm, the pattern pieces are 3mm, and the tsukeko are 8mm. You'll also notice quite thin parts of the asano ha along the top and bottom. These pieces have a mitsuke of 1.5 millimetres, but I'll explain those when we get on to the patterns. The piece is 349.7 by 211 millimetres, and the longest diagonal kumiko have six joints. The pitch is 65 millimetres. The first step is to mark up the story stick. Mark seven joints at equal intervals of exactly 65 millimetres and make sure you trim the end on the 60 degree jig. Allow at least 40 millimetres from this end to the first joint mark. An important step here is to check the accuracy of your marking. Transfer the story stick marks to a scrap piece, then move the scrap piece or the story stick one joint. If the joint marks still line up exactly, your marking has been accurate. Next, trim the ends of nine kumiko to a point on the 60 degree jig. This gives the kumiko a flat face against the end stops. Place the master kumiko next to the story stick and secure them in the jig with ends firmly up against the end stop. The A kumiko have seven joints, whereas the B kumiko only have four, so we'll mark these separately. You'll also have to make a decision here. The group of nine kumiko gives you a fairly wide area to cut, so if you feel that nine are too many to cut at the one time, mark up two master A kumiko and cut the A kumiko in one group of five, then another group of four. Dividing the kumiko into two groups will make them easier to cut. And this is how I have the students on my intermediate workshops cut the A kumiko. Here though, I'll cut the nine kumiko together. Once you've marked the joints, don't forget to add the pencil marks. Remove the story stick and secure the master and eight other A kumiko firmly in the cutting jig. If you decide to split the kumiko into two groups, Secure the first group with the master kumiko in the jig. Then begin transferring the marks across all kumiko, exactly as was done in the coaster video. Now cut down two thirds on each of the marks. Once you've made the cuts, flip the jig around and mark the other edge of each of the joints. And again cut down two thirds on each of the marks.
Now remove the waste. When you've cleaned out the waste, remove the kumiko and secure them firmly up against the right hand end stop. It might be an idea to have another look at this process in the coaster video because I cover it in slightly more detail. There's a link to that video below. Flip the jig around so the side support is facing you and mark as I explained in the coaster video. Here's the diagram again to show where to mark and cut. As I explained in the other video, take care so that the saw blade doesn't fall into the open joint. Flip the jig around and mark, then cut in the normal way. When you've finished cutting, remove the waste. Place a pencil mark between the first and second joints, then remove the kumiko and cut off the end opposite the 60 degree point, about 20 or 30 millimetres past the last joint. That completes the A chemical. The process for the B chemical is exactly the same as that in the coaster video. Secure the story stick and master chemical in the left hand cutting jig and mark four joint marks. There's no need to mark any more than four. Loosen the screws and flip the master kumiko and only the master kumiko over. And again mark the first four joint marks. Remove the story stick and secure the master kumiko and five other kumiko in the jig. 
with the ends firmly against the end stop. Extend the four joint marks across all kumiko as normal. And mark down four millimeters with the marking gauge. Cut down to the 4mm mark. Flip the jig around, mark the other edge of each joint and cut down to the 4mm mark. and remove the waste. Place a pencil mark between the first and second joints. Flip the kumiko over and repeat exactly the same process, although there's no need for the pencil mark between the first and second joints. When cutting the ends off the B Kumiko, allow at least 40 millimetres from the last joint. That completes the Kumiko cutting, and now it's time to assemble the Jigumi. When assembling, you should follow the main diagram closely to make sure the joints are being inserted into their correct locations. The seventh joint on the A Kumiko is a spare in case something bad happens, so cut off that last joint on two A Kumiko. For consistency, I always place the pencil mark or the 60 degree point end towards the bottom for both the A and B Kumiko. These two A Kumiko are the two central diagonal Kumiko. Add a dab of glue to the third and fourth joints and insert a B Kumiko. Again, for consistency, make sure the B Kumiko pencil mark is facing upwards and is towards the bottom. Next, cut off the fourth joint on two B Kumiko so there are only three joints. Make sure you cut close to the fourth joint or at least 40 millimeters past the third joint. Add a dab of glue to the joints in the two diagonal kumiko next to the B kumiko. And insert the B kumiko. Make sure the pencil marks are facing up and are towards the bottom. Keep checking the main diagram closely and continue cutting the kumiko to their proper length and inserting them into their correct location until you've finished assembling the jigumi. Make sure you add extra glue to the edge joints where they'll be cut and attached to the tskeko. Inserting the top kumiko is no different. With the various tensions on the kumiko, some joints may feel tight. So rather than pushing them in with your fingers, use a hammer and tapping block to avoid hearing that horrible snapping sound.
That's the jigumi done. We now have to let that dry thoroughly before cutting the jigumi to size. I normally make up the triangles while waiting for the glue to dry, but I'll cover that part later. The glue is dried and it's time to cut the jigumi to size. Place the jigumi on a flat surface with the pieces to be cut extending over the edge. Position a straight cutting guide along the inner edge of the joints as shown here. These are the side joints. Lightly secure the cutting guide with a couple of clamps. Very carefully cut the side pieces off. Don't rush this because there's only a small amount of glue holding the joints together, so they're fairly weak. The cuts for the top and bottom are made in the centre of the joints, as shown here. When cutting off at the top and bottom, take extra care with the single kumiko pieces. These are quite weak and will snap off if the saw catches, so take your time and don't rush. Either before or after cutting, place a pencil mark on the kumiko to indicate the front top. I penciled in the letter T near the top. And we now have the jigumi cut to size. The next and final step before the patterns is attaching the tskeko. Have a look at the dimensional diagram and cut all tskeko pieces over size. Place the cabinet maker's triangle to indicate top, bottom, left and right, then trim the ends on the 45 degree jig until the inside mitre lines of the tskeko are perfectly lined up with the edge of the respective joints. The bottom with the bottom, top with the top and the sides with their respective sides. I cover this process in some detail in book 4. Place each of the mitre pairs on a flat board and against a block with a 90 degree corner and drill 1.5 mm pilot holes in all mitres from the side skekel. Don't apply any glue at this stage. Attaching the skekel can become a little awkward at times. And while there are many ways of approaching this, the easiest way I've found, and the method I use, is to join the mitres of one corner, then join the mitres of the opposite corner, separate from the jigumi. So to start with, give each of the mitre faces to be joined a good amount of glue. Next, Tap a 1.6mm nail into the mitre from the side skekel so that the point protrudes a couple of millimetres or so. Fit this into the pilot hole in the mating mitre face and gently tap the nail until it's fully inserted. And repeat this with the other mitre joint. Place glue on all the joints and edges that you cut when trimming the jigumi to size. These will join with the skeko.
and add glue to the mitres. Check that all pieces are properly oriented, then carefully bring the tskeko into contact with the jigumi. Push a nail into the pilot hole and tap in until it's fully inserted. and repeat this with the other mitre. Clean up any squeeze out and that completes the jigumi and skeko frame and also brings part one to an end. In part two the fun begins as I make up the asanoha and the kawari asanoha patterns.